Howdy, howdy, everybody out there in YouTube land. Welcome back to the channel. So today, yes, today we've got another magic review for you. Now, I know that this is the second video that we've done this week, and we've taken some time off, and we're really just doing... We're taking our time with the videos. What we've got set up here, as you can see, we've uh, we've just attached it to the tower today. If you were here yesterday, you saw that we got a new webcam, and it's super high def. We're gonna use it for our close-up cam today, but we're still playing around with the technical part of it. We're getting back into doing videos. So we'll be playing around with different things. So we're gonna be doing magic kit reviews. You know for the kiddos but also for somebody who wants to get into magic so we're going to look at a couple of different criteria for this review which is one overall presentation right because we've seen i don't know i just i had it out but i don't know where it went <laughs> so we we've seen like family dollar this is from ollie's by the way if you have an ollie's uh, it was seven dollars but we'll get into that so it was just a little magic show in a box and it was just these cool little magic tricks that you could do it's optical illusions things like that it was fine uh this here so so we're looking at the box you know what does it look like especially like this one this one i'll even get up just to show you because this this was good stuff okay That's what optics came in. So optics is uh, the box. You know, the boxing of it is it was fantastic. I love it. So so we're gonna look at the overall presentation of it, and then we're gonna look at the items themselves to see how they compare to other items that we already have, because we have bought items from magic retailers and from magicians who sell magic items and who who basically uh that's what i'm looking for you people <laughs> they they back those products so they sell them uh but then we're also going to take a look at the actual effects and tricks and things that can be taught from this kit and we're going to take a look at all that so let's go ahead and take a look at the box here the ultimate magic show book and kit now we still have the other box i think it's tucked right down there my first magic show that was the last one that i got uh beautiful kit really nice items in that kit so let's take a look and see what we have i love the love the box itself it comes in this nice little thing it says seven dollars here um, on the back it says retailed for 15. this said 13 for their price so somewhere between 13 and 15 with tax I got it on sale you know why not includes the magic wand so we, we have a couple magic wands here uh, three magic cups now I'm interested to see if these compared to the ones that I got from Doug Khan the smaller ones four magic rings I have that as well a pack of cards magic rope and 16 page book okay that's a nice I mean what else are you gonna do right uh, let's see magic rope so this must be the magic rope right here okay I like having that little close-up cam there you can take a real close look at it so you see the back here very simple that's another thing that I like about it this is a it's like a book it's shaped like a, a tome a magic tome thrill your family and friends with these mind-blowing magic illusions this incredible pack includes and I already read that it's a 16 page book uh, which this is a picture of that book here do the handy dandy uh, there we go that's what that book looks like and it says recommended for six and up okay pretty cool so this opens up elk road very nice on one side you have magic tickets cut along dotted lines um, I'm not really sure why that's like that. I mean, it's double-sided. It says you can cut it, but it's got the Velcro right over top of that. So if this is something that was intended as part of the, the fun of it, to cut these out, you're going to ruin the whole aesthetic of what you're going for here. So I don't feel as comfortable about that. So unless this is just for a display, you know, as, as, far, as, as far as the booklet itself, like if you're gonna control this as a DM 
<laughs> booklet or something. But like if that's just for the fun decoration part, that's fine. But they really went the extra mile with everything. I mean, it's pretty thick too. Uh, you would ruin this because of the Velcro tabs here. So mm, if it's just for, I mean, it's on both sides. So it's it's a tough one because I think it would be cool to have ticket like cut out tickets as part of like an arts and crafts uh, thing that you could do with this type of thing and that would be fine but for this particular case mm, it, it looks good um, so over here we have the book now I wonder if the book comes out or if the book is attached so the, the book is attached. So this whole thing is meant to be one whole piece. This opens up into four different squares. On one side, you've got the the, the tickets, which it'll be upside down, but you'll see the, the tickets there, the magic show. And then on this side, you've actually got a nice little mat board. So I would, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. You could actually, it says cut here again. It says cut on this one, but you can't because of the Velcro. And on this one has uh, has the Velcro on the other side. So mm, you're going to, I mean, you're really taking this thing apart. So you're not going to be able to put it back together if you do that. But it does give you a nice little mat that you could practice on to keep everything in place. Okay, now as far as taking this apart, this isn't even attached. So this comes right off. Boom, done deal. We have our cards. Now this definitely, you know this is gonna bother me because it's just, it doesn't look like, it's like the Phantasma all over again. Um, these cups are super duper tiny. I love that. Very cute, very, oh, I mean they could just disappear in the hands that's that's pretty cool that they're super duper tiny a nice little cups and balls routine with that uh, that could actually come in handy with the with the bigger cups that I have because I love hiding stuff inside of other things so I could smaller cup and smaller cup would be great the wand is uh, a lot longer than I anticipated uh, usually what I do is I take a look at the ends here Oh, there's some sneaky business going on with this. Hoo, hoo, hoo. We'll have to take a look at that. Um, it's not terrible. It actually reminds me of the thinner wand that I have that I got from the Magic Show kit, which is really nice. Uh, a lot of finesse going on with this. You can play around with that. You can have a good time with that. So we'll take a look at that a little bit later. We got the rings. I'm curious as to whether or not the rings are any different than the ones I already have. Again, I don't know where I put them at the moment. Usually they're sitting right here. There they are. Okay. Um, so these are pretty much the exact rings that I already have. So the rings might not be as good of a quality, but I mean, that's still, that's pretty nice. I mean, the rings don't. Mm, I don't know about that. It's definitely a dull sound to it. Yeah. I like it when they ring, you know, give you a little. Actually, I don't know if I've ever. I've kind of done it with these ones. You can kind of hear the metallic ring of them. It's a sound illusion, you know. I don't practice with enough. <laughs> yeah, but it's only an illusion, right? Because when you look at it from the side. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, if you know, you know. These rings are definitely coded or just not real rings. That's all I can say about that. But not terrible at all. Then you have this. I've always wondered about this little doohickey. Uh, and that is a word and for sure so yeah so it's a magic rope so even if you you pull from one end to the other it's all fine and dandy but then you can go ahead and give it a cut and 
it still kind of pulls. It, 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 you know, I, I don't, I don't know how it works either. Yeah. So that's all I gotta say about that. No, that's that's fancy. I like that. So that's actually built on a very nice principle. And it's pretty decent, but we'll, and I don't actually own one of those, so it's nice to see that. And I can do a short video with that because it's fun. This goes back on here now. The fact that the book does not, the book is attached to this whole thing, is now. It's interesting because I love the whole setup, but the setup is clearly designed to come apart. So you can use this. You can hand out the tickets for the magic show, and have a good time with it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, the fact that the book is attached in such a way that I feel like it would ruin it. Well, maybe not. Because I don't want to keep it in here. I want to have it separate so I can put it with the other stuff. But the question for you is, how well does it come apart? Ah, it's a pretty decent adhesive. <laughs> it's coming off fairly easily. You just have to play around with a little bit here. Hmm. I'll take care, I'll take a look at that a little bit later. But let's go ahead and peruse through the book. So, so let's talk about the criteria that we've already looked at so far, and that is the packaging. The packaging is absolutely beautiful, but it's not user friendly because it's supposed to be taken apart. You're supposed to cut here, you're supposed to cut these out. Now you have these different pieces to play around with and the book is attached in such a way that in order to take it apart you have to might have to get an adult to help. Ooh, I need an adult to help me. See and then now I just ripped the uh, the booklet itself. Not the book but the, the backing. No, that was definitely maybe the book. Peeling. Yeah, that's definitely the book on that part. See? That's what I'm talking about. Um, so overall, execution of the packaging needs some work. Okay, let's take a look. The Ultimate Magic Show. What's in the pack? The Ultimate Magician, the Magician's Wand, Cups, Rings, Cards, Rope, Putting on a Magic Show. So there's a magician's costume. Uh, the only thing better than watching magic is performing it. Just like a real magician, you'll learn how to put on a magic show. You'll be able to perform tricks that will surprise and astound your audience. So here's a big deal because we don't want to just talk about the tricks. We want to talk about what the what this all means. What's the purpose of it? And we also want to be able to convey to our young magician how they need to present themselves to the audience. Like. I try to throw in these little silly things, I try to have a good time, we're having fun, we're just playing around, and even when I'm doing videos such as this, there's still a back and forth comedic, there's still a seriousness, there's a tone that follows everything, and there's a presentation happening. Now we're more of a, I'm talking and you're listening type of set, set, set up here, but that's, that's fine. So what I'm curious about is, one, like when we get to the tricks, this is just talking about what's in the pack, but... A magician, let's see what they say about a magician's costume. To perform magic, a magician must look the part. A dinner suit or black jacket, a top hat, and a bow tie will do the trick. You could also wear a long sleeve cloak and even a wizard or a witch hat. It really doesn't matter. So now they're really leaning in the direction of a magician. Okay, but in reality, just wear what you wear. Just wear your clothes because what's going to happen is this, and this is a big, uh, for one thing, um, Josh Norbito, but also pretty much anybody that you learn from is going to teach you is that you should be rehearsing in the clothes that you're going to perform in, first off, okay? But if, so if you switch it up, like there was a couple of individuals, um, I believe it was Christopher Nolan, he's a, um, he's a director movies he's not you know he wears the same type of clothes everywhere he goes it's just different colors because he knows where the pockets are so he'll wear the same style of clothes every day they'll just be different colors so there's you just become comfortable with what you want to wear josh nobrito the reason why i brought him up is because he said he started with a formal wear 
straight. That's it. What they're talking about here, he's talking about suit and everything. And he's more com comfortable, and correct me if I'm wrong, in more of a comfortable hip-hop dancing type of style. He moves, he grooves, he gets he gets it on. You know, he he likes to be involved. He does backflips. You know, so his he can't necessarily just go in there with a full tight suit on to do that kind of stuff. So what he had to do is he had to modify his his attire to fit the balance for what he wanted to do and how he wanted to perform. And he is slowly moving his comfortable business performing attire into the realm of where he likes it to be. So he, you can clearly see in his videos that he has style. He has a vision. And that's, that's what's important for this. But you take a look at a lot of other individuals who are performing magic. They're performing magic on the street in a t-shirt. So do you need all of this stuff? No. You have to have presence. But you have to have that vision that I was just talking about. And you can wear this stuff and that's great. I have a top hat over here I do for magic. I do reveal with it. You know, that's always add that in. You know, if that's going to be your style. So you could wear this. Definitely wear a jacket with extra pockets. Why not? You can, ha you can have everything on you when you go out. Whereas if you're wearing just regular clothes, you might only have two or three pockets that you can actually utilize. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. Basic tricks. Start out with the tricks in this book and practice them in front of a mirror first until you don't make any mistakes. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> then do them in front of a friend to make sure it looks like it should. Don't get put off if you don't get it right, right when you first learn a trick. It's not easy being a master magician. So <clears throat> in the illustrious words of the Encyclopedia of Magic, Mr. Douglas Kahn, mistakes happen <laughs> like that's he'll be doing lives he'll be performing he'll be doing whatever there's people everywhere and you make a mistake and you just roll with it it's gonna happen mistakes are going to happen there is never going to be a time in your life obviously there are people who go on to america's got talent there's people who do fool us there's all these are individuals who have honed a particular skill to the point where mistakes just aren't allowed to happen and then you see someone like David Blaine who makes mistakes. It happens. Mistakes are going to happen. You need to learn how to intercept them and to be able to continue on without stumbling. That's the secret. Mistakes will happen. You've got to go with it. You've got to learn how to maneuver those waters. That's what's going to make you successful because you have magicians who go on and they have a script. One. Two, three, four. Uh, 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 uh. There's, there's no five. I don't know how to. So, so that's that's what happens. In, in not saying anything bad to anybody who scripts out their material. Absolutely, script your material. But what will happen if you only practice and perform from the script? Then, when something happens in the world, which it will then you may start to find yourself to be uncomfortable or nervous or become anxious, but don't let that deter you. That's where the magic happens. When it becomes organic, when you're off the script and now you're performing for the people and they see you, they see the real you, that's where it happens. So keep that in mind. The ultimate magician. What is the ultimate magician? I don't know, but this guy's jacket's pretty cool, it's purple. Close up. If I can get the right, there you go. You can kind of see it there. It's like an old Victorian style. It'd probably be better if I just moved this. That was the intent. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just playing around here, you know. Uh, so let's see. Did you know, or <clears throat> what kind of magician will you be? So we kind of briefly were going into the idea of this, but let's see what they go with it. Did you know there's more than one kind of magician? There are many, including illusionists, clown magicians, and even escape artists. It doesn't matter what you do, what you choose to be. Once you've mastered the, the tricks in this book, you'll be ready to astound and astonish your audience. This is beautiful material here because you don't want to just open a book and just be like, trick number one, trick number two. You want to have context. This is building something here, and that's what's going to be important for you. An illusionist. You might want to be an illusionist. Illusionists make things disappear or, or appear or disappear, seem to be able to walk through objects or make things float in the air. 
One of the most famous tricks illusionists perform is sawing a person in half. David Copperfield even managed to make the Statue of Liberty in New York disappear. What? So yeah, so you can definitely do illusionist type act. So, so a lot of those are going to be on stage or they're going to be a staged event where there's people going to be positioned in a specific location and then you're going to have something grand happening in front of you. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because there's definitely some things that will take place for a regular magician who may use certain aspects of the illusionist grandeur in a smaller show. So keep your eye out for that as well. And study all these different art forms so you can figure out how to incorporate the things that you like. Because, for instance, they're talking about an escape artist. Now they're looking at Houdini. Uh, or you could learn to be an escape artist like Harry Houdini, probably one of the most famous magicians ever. Imagine being able to escape from handcuffs or even from a prison cell. Some of these tricks are really difficult to do, though, and can be dangerous. A common escape trick is escaping from a container with no air, like a coffin, or from a container that's filling up with water. So I would, I would absolutely say go ahead and deep dive into any particular magicians you want to learn about we have discovered things over time that have changed our vision of certain individuals but the material and the context and the magic that they performed there's still definitely something to be said and something to be shared about the works of these individuals maybe not the maybe not the private lives or the context of how they led themselves that's a discussion for a different time but in this case escape artists so handcuffs things like that these are these are beautiful close-up acts that you could put on in your show this person this magician here i showed you with the coat ha it has their arms tied up why not just just do those little bit of things like straight jacket routine a lot of magicians close-up magicians and stuff will do a straight jacket routine because it offers something fascinating and interesting and captivates you know so Try it out. Try it all out. A clown magician. Clown magicians perform all sorts of magic tricks. They do card tricks, disappearing tricks, rope tricks. In fact, they probably perform most of the tricks you'll learn in this book. You don't have to go over the top with your clown costume either. It could be something as simple as a colorful bow tie and shirt. Anything. Wear whatever suits you, whatever fits you, whatever is perfect for you, whatever you're comfortable in because you're the one performing. You have to convey to the audience, as long as the form and the function of what you're wearing assist you in some way. So if you want something distracting or something like my shirt here that's like, that's clearly magic theme. This guy's here talking about magic. So it's very clear. I'm, I'm just looking at my hair here because I can see that I'm, uh, you know, I got my hair up and stuff and I got my, hairline <laughs> it's good stuff anyway uh a wizard you're gonna be a wizard harry or a hairy wizard i don't know uh then there are wizard magicians like merlin the magician a famous magician from a legend more than 1500 years old wizard magicians use props like crystal balls and magic wands cast spells or use magic potions famous fictional wizards include gandalf from the lord of the rings harry potter and Dumbledore from the Harry Potter books. Wizard magicians have supernatural powers. So not just anyone can be one. So basically what you're doing here is you're, we're talking about different stages. So a clown magician might be somebody who is seen as more silly and fun and just projecting this ha 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 just having you know a comedic side of magic whereas a wizard is distinguished flowy robes and a wand you know so there might be a little bit more fireworks with the wizard and a little bit more confetti with the clown you know so you can really spin it however you want but these are modes modus operandi or however you want to say it you know these are things that allow you to to project yourself to your audience however you feel comfortable and whatever part you want to play in presenting them with this magical spectacle the magic wand so now we're getting into the different things um so i'm really curious about this um obviously this one is one that i have uh i've done this one before it's been a little bit though so the interesting thing about the wand is that the wand has been known to float you got it 
You got the one that's floating. Oh, it's floating. Oh, I had to catch it. <laughs> it's a good one. Um, so there's that one. Um, there's the Cups and Balls, which Cups and Balls is absolutely fantastic. It's probably a fan favorite for so many people who get into magic. Because in and of, it, in and of itself, it offers something absolutely beautiful. So it comes with three cups and three balls, right? I'm going to keep the purple one. The purple one's going to be for me. You got the blue one and the red one. You can't really even see that. We're going to use our close-up. There we go. Now the question is, the question is, we got three cups and three balls. If we take one ball and put it on the top, now we have two balls, one of the cup, we snap our fingers and it'll go to my cup, the purple one at the bottom. It's pretty interesting, I'll tell you that much, right? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the blue cup. That's going to be your cup. Oops. <laughs> blue cup. They're tiny. you got to get used to it. Snap the fingers, and that's going to make the ball go right through. We've done it before, so you kind of already know what was going on. Now we have a third one right here. Now we're going to go back to my cup. We're going to take this ball. We're going to get we're going to, this fuzzy wuzzy had a bear. We're going to go ahead and put it in my pocket. It's good. Okay, now all we gotta do is snap our fingers and all three will be on the table. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty good, I know. <laughs> Have to practice with the little cups. So Cups and Balls is um, a blast. I love Cups and Balls. So they have, uh, so looking at, let's go back for a second. What are they looking to do here? So there's magic tricks with the wand, which it's basically a, a an accessory. You know, it's a it's a tool that you can use to direct or misdirect at your leisure. So, and there's some built-in magic with it as well. Um, then you got the cups and balls, which is the whole act of, part part of what I just went through. Um, so that's going to be a nice little trick for you to practice. Um, it's definitely made for smaller hands, so it's it's gonna it would take me a little bit to get used to the feel of them and the move of them. And the one thing that I'm not a big fan of the red puff balls is they're so tiny and weightless that they get stuck to the air or to you know just just in general they're just so tiny that there's no weight to them. So if they get they get lost easily in your folds of your hand or in your fingers or even in the cups because they're so tiny and delicate so you got to really practice with those the rings um, looks like we've got a basic ring trick here uh, so this is decent okay these are things that I would have to practice and perform for you what you're if I'm on task and doing what I should be doing I should be producing a video uh, short videos showing you the tricks that are in these books and giving you a, a chance to interpret and to learn from that. Now, we're talking about cards. Now in here there's pictures of ropes, but obviously the only thing we have here is the magic rope box. Um, so cards, let's take a look at this. We haven't even opened them yet. We're going to get to that. We're going to circle back to them because cards are the big, the big deal. You know, we got to talk about the cards. Uh, before you count, uh, front audience, count up, count up 25 of your cards. Okay. So it gives you just a simple four step card trick here. The magic rope. Uh, I've already performed that. Okay. Once you've mastered the tricks in this book, you're ready to put on a magic show that will surprise and amaze your family and friends. To put on a magic show, you'll need a table covered with a cloth and the contents of your pack. So basically four tricks. I mean, that's really uh, one, two, three, four, five. Potentially five tricks if you're talking about the wand being one of them. 
Uh, while you're performing your tricks, make big hand movements, waving your arms about. Decide on a magic word like abracadabra, which you can use during your performance. Speak loudly and clearly so that you should you sound confident and make sure you make a bow at the end of your performance. Oh, excuse me. A bow at the end of your performance. Yes. Any questions? <laughs> Um, okay, so as far as the book goes, it started out really strong, but it's slowly started to lose its its uh, gr appeal as it went on, and not not in a terrible way. I'll have to practice the tricks to determine whether or not there's anything of merit there, but there's a question that I have here because. What happens is, is it starts off beautifully talking about how to present yourself and how to be prepared, but it doesn't go into enough detail for me to talk about what else should I do to prepare. Like, there should be a chapter at least on tr troubleshooting, you know, just projection, like just talking, you know, talking, you know, take it, take, be aware of your surroundings or something. That's something I would definitely consider adding and I'm already gonna say this because you can see looking at the cards is just print good cards it's not that hard it's not that difficult to just have cards printed so these are definitely classic cards coded Thick stock, not too bad on the handling. I put them in the aviator, uh, maybe a little lower than the aviator. The classics, you know, these. This is a Cardamundi classic right here. This is just a basic starter deck of cards. It's not going to get you anywhere because it doesn't even look like it's a trick deck. So what I like about you know and sharing whatever goes into it uh, a trick deck is something that offers a beginner magician a chance to perform real magic without the skill now you could you could say okay well don't do that just give them a deck of cards that they can learn how to do magic for themselves and that's fine but they're gonna be a magician so they should be doing magic out the door, out the get go. Just do the magic, right? So that's that's what we're talking about here. Give them a trick deck. It's fine. So this is just standard stock. Nothing fancy. You're just doing a basic card trick. You know, so it's it's not terrible. Not terrible at all. The deck is actually better than some that I've seen, uh, but overall. I'm gonna give it an F for the cards. I always do. I always give it an F unless the those cards are legitimate playing cards from bicycle or something. I give it an F because there's no reason. Even if you were to buy a less than standard deck, just pay for it. You're gonna be printing off hundreds of these anyway. You're gonna be selling these. So why not add an extra dollar or so and say it includes genuine playing cards? The value would be far superior. You could even design your own deck based on your, you know, your magic show. You could do the ultimate magic show playing cards. Have have a good time with it, you know. Just do it. <laughs> Okay, so let's go with a recap for the criteria that we had going on here today. Uh, basically, the packaging is, it's a 75. Yeah, it's going to be a 75 for me, 75 out of 100, just because it's displayable, it's it packaged up real nicely, as long as you don't take anything apart, everything can go back together. 
Um, so this is beautiful. Now I can store this right on my shelf, and when I need to, I can take it out and I can do stuff with the stuff in the kit. And there's even room to include the stuff in there, uh, which is nice. I mean, it's it's just it's um it's a magic kit in a box, and you can store this. It's beautiful, so it gets a passing grade for me. The book, the book again. I mean, it's it's sad. I, mean, I would say somewhere in the seventy-five range, seventy-five out of hundred. Uh, basically, it did the same thing. It started off really nice. It seemed to have a nice progression for the way the tricks are, but it doesn't go into enough detail to give me as the reader or f a confidence that a young magician is going to be able to garner some very basic essentials, which is speaking in presenting there should be a presenting chapter just even its own little thing a trick you know step one through five speaking and presenting it's just do it come on just include this so that they can get this this initiation into the presenting world underway uh so 75 for that as well and as far as the props that were in here uh cards failed the wand was great the rings Pretty much magic ropes good uh, and the cups and balls were tiny which I like for smaller hands um, so that's okay and cups and balls in itself is a bonus having those so what do I think I think it's another 75 this is where I'm kind of like am I just putting myself like am I am I being too nice or do I feel like I don't want to be too harsh in a in this type of projection so I think it passes. It passes as a great starter kit, uh, but it's not good enough. And that's that's going to be my grade for that. Not good enough because it doesn't it doesn't go far enough to initiate somebody, a young magician or someone such as myself who's familiar with magic. It's it doesn't give me enough to be like they would need more obviously and that's fine because this is a starter kit but this is <coughs> sorry the ultimate magic show book and kit it's not ultimate it's just a magic show it's just a starter kit uh, so yes it looks great but it doesn't live up to the idea that let's say you're going to start off with something like if it had a stellar deck of cards in here beautiful good way to go okay and let's say there was a chapter on how to perform and to present in different medium fantastic so what would those things do for you and then what if what if instead of doing this setup with this what if they included a mat such as that instead of doing a fake mat here what if what if there was like where the book Across from here, what if there was actually a mat in there like that? Just a little starter mat. Hmm? Now we're talking about close up. We're talking about presentation. We're talking about a deck of cards that's going to last them well in their performances without them having to go out and buy another one. That is going to be a way for them to accentuate themselves and to start into magic and to continue. That's the key word right there. This book is something that they would be able to come back to and to consider passing on. So, that's what I've got for you today. The Ultimate Magic Show book and kit. I hope you enjoyed. I really do. Stay tuned for more videos coming real soon. And remember, always remember, stay positive, stay active, and stay awesome. And we'll see you in the next one. Ha, ha, ha.